Tidy Pickett and Louise Stokes also caused barriers of gender and racial discrimination, this time on the track. Once the starting gun was raised in the air, their feet were set into place, and their eyes locked onto the 100 meters straightaway, history was made. Tidy Pickett, the first black woman to run in an Olympic event, was born in Chicago, 1914, in the neighborhood of Inglewood. She lived in an area where everyone was family, where blacks had businesses, and everyone at each corner store knew you, your mother, and your mother's mother. This was Chicago's South Side, where it was deadly for blacks to venture across the border, separating black and white neighborhoods. Pickett's interest in track came from the races that were held in her neighborhood. Boys and girls would line up to race, and in each race, Pickett would demolish the other kids, running faster and faster every time. Pickett eventually joined the track club, where she was taught how to control her breathing, how to jump, and how to run properly. After competing in a couple of school meets, she was soon noticed by John Brooks, a University of Chicago long jumper, who would win the NCAA tournament long jump championship in 1933. Brooks became Pickett's mentor and coach for the Olympics in 1932 through 1936. He made sure I had my first pair of running shoes, Pickett said. Louise Stokes and Tidy Pickett were teammates during the 1932 Olympics in Los Angeles. They had placed fourth and sixth respectively in the 100-meter trials and were expected to run in the 400-meter relay. The, the other athletes on the track team were white and they made sure it was known that Stokes and Pickett did not belong. While the team was stopped in a Denver hotel, their white teammates enjoyed a banquet in the hotel ballroom while, St while Stokes and Piggy were forced to eat in their rooms. While on the train on the way to Los Angeles, white teammates threw ice water on the sleeping Pickett and insulted her. Through it all, the harshest treatment that 17-year-old Pickett and 18-year-old Stokes had to face was when they prohibited from running in the 1932 Los Angeles Olympics. These ladies endured bad treatment from their teammates, from fans, from everyone, just so they could run, only to be replaced at the last minute by two white women who would, whom they had beaten in the trials. Stokes and Pickett were furious young ladies, but what more could they have done? They had no protection. They were black teenagers against the world. Stokes commented on the removal, saying, a pretty fast stunt was pulled. The only thing that would have helped us to have, men, have a man stand up for us was as well as going to all the meetings. This is what happened when we didn't have anyone to support us. In an interview, Pickett said, times were different. Some people didn't want to admit we were better runners. And she went to great grave believing that prejudice, not slowness, kept her out of the competition. Pickett and Stokes ended back at the 1936 Olympics, this time in Berlin. Was it a coincidence? Was it fate? Or was it their second chance? Either way, these women were back and ready for whatever was going to be thrown at them. Stokes did not qualify in the Olympics trials, but she was still invited to become a member of the team. She expected to compete until, the, until she was again suddenly removed before the competition. Pickett, however, qualified for the 80-meter hurdles, and at the age of 21, Tidy Pickett became the first African-American woman to compete in the Olympic Games. She made it all the way to the semifinals of the 80-meter hurdles, but a broken foot forced her to forfeit. Although this was a tragic disappointment for Picky, it was a door opener for other, for other athletic black women who looked to Picky and Stokes as inspirations to never give up and rise above prejudice and social expectations.